poštovani učesnici, dobar dan vam želim. Moje ime je Nadira Berbić. Dobar dan, moje ime je Nadira Berbić. I am Nadira Berbić and I welcome you warmly on behalf of the Center for Environment and Resources Center 21. This is the local partner to the Stockholm Environment Institute and we work together on the development on the strategy and action plan for environment. I'm honored to moderate this webinar today together with Professor Husika. And at the beginning, may I first uh, inform you of the program of this webinar. As you could see in the agenda that we provided, this webinar has two parts. In the first part, we will discuss the concept and the context. We will learn more about production and use of coal in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So we will have an overview of the coal sector and energy trends in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Then we will provide you with an insight into just transition and we will provide an overview of uh, lessons learned and experience in the past. The second part of the webinar will uh, offer several practical examples about just transition. First, uh, we will be informed about the initiative for support uh, of coal regions in the Western Balkan countries and Ukraine. And then we will learn how Poland planned their energy transition as the World Bank is one of the main partners in addition to the European Commission, which supports the energy transition, we will have an opportunity to learn about the activities of the World Bank uh, in the transition processes in Bosnia and Herzegovina and other Balkan countries. Uh, one another key partner is the uh, EBRD, and we will also learn about the engagement of EBRD in Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Balkans. And we will finish the, this webinar with the perspective of the energy sector. We will actually uh, obtain an overview of energy transition and we will address some challenges and opportunities in Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is a program that we prepared for today. After the presentations, we will have discussion, question and answer session and conclusions. Some technical remarks before we start. As you could see, today's uh, webinar uh, will take place uh, on the Zoom platform in form of the webinar. Uh, you should be aware that the webinar will be recorded and the recordings of the webinar will be available after the webinar. And you have uh, also a possibility to participate in the discussion using the option question and answers option on the Zoom application. And, and I, I do encourage you to take part in the discussion during this webinar. Now, I will hand over to Professor Husika. And he is the, the lead expert uh, in the working group for energy and uh, climate change. And th the question for you, why is the energy transition important and in which way is it addressed in the ESAP project? Thank you, Nadira, for your question. And before I answer your question, I would like to welcome all the participants and attendees on my own behalf and on behalf of the team, which within the development of the strategy and action plan for Bosnia and Herzegovina addresses the thematic area of climate change and energy. As for your question, I should first say that uh, I'm very happy that uh, we have this opportunity to discuss this topic even on in an online format. And this is a very important topic for Bosnia and Herzegovina, given that uh, energy transition is uh, of major importance for the economy of Bosnia and Herzegovina because over two thirds uh, of energy is produced, is coal-based and uh, what 
has not been stressed enough is the fact that uh, coal is also used significantly for heating purposes, especially in private households and also in the district heating systems. Coal is also extremely important when it comes to industrial production in Bosnia and Herzegovina. As we all know, Bosnia and Herzegovina has a very long tradition in coal mining over 100 years. Over this long period, uh, the whole regions in Bosnia and Herzegovina became quite dependent on coal mining and local mines, which not only provide uh, for the majority of uh, jobs there, but the whole economy in this area focuses and relies on coal mine. Today, with the imperative of decarbonization, these areas face a huge challenge. How to transition from coal, away from coal within the given timeline until 2050. From this point of view, this may seem quite a far future, but this process is time consuming and it should have started yesterday and today can even be too late, but we should not delay activities and measures in this on, on this path. This is why it is uh, crucial to start this transition process and uh, recognize the development opportunity, not only for the coal areas and uh, coal regions, but also for the entire economy of Bosnia and Herzegovina. We are developing ESAP uh, with a participatory approach and together with our members of our working group, we define measures which should uh, streamline the energy transition and improve at the same time our environment. So we look at the challenge of the energy strategy as a development com component and a component which will lead to improved environment. This is why we identified the need to hold this kind of uh, webinar, many discussions at the level of the working groups uh, 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 aimed uh, and uh, indicated the need uh, to hold this seminar together with our colleagues from the Stockholm Environment Institute. Uh, we now organize this webinar and uh, I'm very happy to see that there is a huge interest in this webinar. To this end, we identified uh, key stakeholders in this area. So today with us, we have representatives of the Ministry of Economic Relations and, Econ uh, and uh, Trade, uh, Mr. Admir Mesic, who is Assistant Minister. And uh, we have uh, Mr. Senad Oprasic, who is the head of the uh, Department for Environment in after. This ministry plays a major role in these activities, and uh, now I invite Dr. Softic to address the meeting briefly and to address or to identify the challenges that this ministry meets in the energy transition. The floor is yours. Dr. Sostich, can you hear us? Yeah, I can you hear me well? Yes. The floor is yours. First of all, may I greet all of you on behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Trade and uh, Economic Relations, the energy sector. I'm honored to be with you today. And uh, as for the Ministry of Foreign Trade, uh, 
and I would like to thank the, the team of the World Bank, which together with us started working on the initiative. The Ukraine joined us later together with Miss Rachel and Miss Rom and our Jenan who works uh, in the World Bank. Uh, we uh, successfully became a priority country for transition for energy transition together with the other Balkan countries and Ukraine. And we, what we do together with the team of the World Bank is that we are mapping, uh, developing a roadmap uh, for the transition. And our plan is to have in place this plan by the end of this um, uh, September. Uh, we are currently identifying the stakeholders and uh, we will uh, finally, ultimately defined together with the line ministries and of the entities, uh, the approach to this effort. May I thank the organizer of this meeting. Uh, we will have enough time to discuss this topic and to exchange, uh, to share our uh, experience and opinion. Thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, I'll come back later. Thank you, Mr. Softich. Thank you for your participation at this webinar and thank you for sharing with us uh, this useful and current uh, information about the activities uh, uh, conducted in your ministry. Certainly the uh, Department for Environment in MOFTER is, plays a crucial role in the transition process uh, as uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina is a member of the energy community and a party to the Paris Agreement, and it has certain obligations to this end. Now I invite Mr. Senad Oprosic to briefly uh, greet you and uh, to inform us about the activities of his department. Thank you, Professor, for this opportunity to share with you some considerations about these activities that are challenging and extremely important. What is extremely important is that Bosnia and Herzegovina can be independent uh, in terms of the energy uh, by using 6 billion tons of coal in stock if we continue mining. We also have uh, significant water potentials, but in future, we need to rely on renewable energy sources because uh, we accepted uh, and committed uh, to reduce uh, the global emissions. And uh, we committed to use uh, uh, renewable energy sources available to us. We do have renewable energy sources and the transition to renewable sources from coal, away from coal to renewable sources is a huge challenge. Having worked and discussed this uh, with many of you, I got an impression that uh, we are doing the same on several fronts and uh, multiple institutions are engaged uh, in different efforts. There is no joint action, common action, but this common action, a common approach uh, could uh, be adopted by forming a, a national team or a group, whatever we call it, uh, which would comprise uh, competent experts of course, uh, civil servants, senior civil servants and uh, ministers uh, as appropriate, who would uh, negotiate uh, with the international community about the assistance it needs uh, to address these issues of transition from non-renewable to renewable energy sources. To this end, the international community has uh, um, available resources uh, which we could use 
and uh, uh, ensure for our electricity companies and all others who could contribute to this effort. We are aware that the citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, are doing their best to refit their homes, to replace their roofs and to install some instruments or elements uh, which uh, lead to energy efficiency or contribute to energy efficiency of their homes and they want to pay uh, lower electricity bills but uh, a, a, an, an action of the state uh, should uh, also be present to this end uh, in form of uh, very specific um, allocations, fund allocations, and uh, encouragement uh, of import of uh, electric uh, vehicles uh, would also contribute to energy efficiency and uh, mitigation of climate change. I, I uh, would, uh, my preference would be if we use this uh, meeting, and that's my proposal, of course, to uh, make a proposal to form the one joint team comprising uh, senior experts, civil servants, and perhaps some members of the international community, which would prepare one common platform for Bosnia and Herzegovina, which it could use to obtain necessary funds that would be used for the transition ahead of us. I read that 20, 250 million marks uh, were dedicated uh, by Electroprivida for closure of coal mines, but perhaps we could supplement this uh, dedicated funds uh, through some other, from some other sources, international sources. Perhaps we could address the Secretariat of the Convention or um, international projects uh, with a clear uh, ambition how we will implement this transition. Thank you very much. I apologize for taking too much time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oprashic, for this introductory remarks. And uh, thank you for information you shared with us. Uh, and thank you especially for this uh, very specific uh, proposal, uh, which we noted down and uh, which we will propose as a conclusion for today's meeting. I suggest uh, we move on with our agenda and I hand over to Nadira. Thank you very much, Professor. I see that uh, we now have 115 participants, attendees, uh, so uh, we should perhaps uh, check the structure of our attendees and we will use uh, this uh, update uh, technology we have available. I will share my screen with you. I do hope uh, you can see it very well. Now, I would like to all the attendees and participants to uh, 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 type uh, com and then to open this uh, site and answer the question from which sector they come. Thank you very much. This is a very good way to see from which sectors uh, our attendees come. And we will have some other questions during the webinar that uh, we will ask you to answer very well. I see that you all found the site that uh, we are receiving answers uh, so far. We have most representatives of the academia and private companies. Mm -hmm. 
we'll wait for a couple of minutes to see the final results. This, you can access this application through your PC or your mobile phone, whatever is more comfortable for you. Forty-six responses. I ask all the participants really to answer these these questions, as it is so important to have the idea of the structure of our participants at the very beginning. This is the current uh, overview. Most of you come from the uh, government institutions, academia private companies the number is slowly increasing Excellent. So I suggest we continue with our agenda. As you can see, according to uh, this, so most of you come from the government institutions, academia and private companies in the third place. And the fourth place is shared by the uh, CSOs and public companies. And one more. Uh, from the government institutions. I will stop uh, screen sharing. I have a great honor to introduce our next presenter. That's Mr. Damir Miljevic. Mr. Miljevic is a member of the management board of the Center for Sustainable Energetic Transition, RESET, in Sarajevo, he has over seven years experience in development of energy market and economics of the energy transition. Since February this year, he's been working as an expert for energy transition in the Secretariat of the Initiative for Coal, Agent, uh, coal Regions in Transition in the Western Balkans and Ukraine. Good morning, Mr. Miljevic, the floor is yours. Oh, good, good day. Uh, first of all, I'd like to greet all of you who are with us today and to thank the organizer for this opportunity they gave me to say something about the coal sector in Bosnia and Herzegovina and to uh, try to give a, an overview of the sector. I am an economist, so my whole approach to this situation will be from that uh, point of view. But uh, let me first uh, give a brief overview of the current situation in the uh, coal sector in Bosnia Herzegovina. As for the uh, production of coal, we are producing uh, lignite and brown coal, and the total amount is at the level of 13 million tons a year. In 2019, it was 13.4 million tons. 94% of the coal that we produce is uh, used for generation of electrical power and some 70,000 uh, tons for uh, generating heat, actually uh, used uh, in households for heating and in the district heating systems in the cities. More than 50% of the produced uh, uh, energy, heat energy in the district heating is the uh, coal uh, generated energy and the remaining uh, is one of the remaining amount, one third is used in the uh, individual households. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, currently we have 11 coal mines, active coal mines, and five th thermal power plants. And uh, this whole sector employs more than 17,000 workers. 
except for the thermal power plant uh, Stanari, which was started in uh, uh, 2016, all other PPPs are old and different units are 31 to, uh, to 71 years old, so the situation is not great. In the table that you can see here on the right hand side in blue, you see the productivity per worker in kilowatt hours, and you can see that this new thermal power plant is uh, three to five times more productive than our old uh, PPPs. As for the uh, total installed capacity, uh, it's uh, 4.5 thousand gigawatts, and in this whole capacity, the PPPs uh, produce uh, or generate 40 percent. The total production of electricity is between 15 and 17 gigawatt hours. And in 2019, it was 16,000 gigawatt hours. And the participation, the share of electricity generated from coal varies uh, uh, year to year between uh, 60 and 72 percent, depending uh, basically on hydrology. What's important to say here is this uh, generation with the, this generation of electricity, uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina is an active exporter uh, of electricity and the only one uh, at that. So when you look at this, it uh, appears that we, we generate more power than we consume, but the generation is not really uh, economically and uh, technologically uh, top of what can be found in the world. Almost all uh, coal mines and TPPs are not profitable. And production of coal and power is uh, subsidized. In this period, 2015-2019, the total amount of direct subsidies in this sector of uh, generation of electricity from coal was 167 million euros. What's uh, important to say from economic point of view is what's the cost of uh, generation of electricity. In this yellow table, you can see the actual costs uh, of generating one megawatt of power by uh, TPPs in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And you can see that this range goes from 35 euros in the most modern one to 55 in TPP Kakan. When you add on top of this cost, the uh, coverage of losses, because most of TPPs are making losses, and if you add the subsidies, you get that the actual cost of the megawatt hour from generated in TPPs in Bosnia-Herzegovina is much, much higher. And uh, on the average, it exceeds 50 euros per megawatt hour. The asterisk uh, next to the TPP Ugevic uh, is to signify that this is uh, without this new technology of desulfurization. With this desulfurization process, we need to add eight more uh, marks. Uh, just a reminder that you have three minutes left. So when you look at all this, uh, it becomes obvious that this uh, power of this cost of generation, we are not competitive in the market. So the conclusion that follows from all of this is that the current generation of power from coal, even with the direct subsidies, is ineffective and not profitable and makes losses. The measures of uh, improving generation can achieve something uh, to some extent, but if you take into consideration the investments needed, uh, one cannot uh, achieve competitiveness even if we don't count the uh, CO2 taxes. And the cost of all these investments will have to 
to be laid over onto the consumers in in the form of increased cost of power so uh, phasing out the uh coal generate uh generation of power from coal is not only the uh, commitment this country uh, undertook but it's also the only rational decision this country can make and this is my last slide we have uh, some good news to share Electroprivreda, the power company of Bosnia and Herzegovina, started restructuring coal mines. Six local communities announced their interest in uh, uh, transitioning out of the coal sector. The main challenges and main issues is who will lead this uh, energy transition and uh, phasing out coal, and what would be the role of the higher levels of government uh, citizens, businesses, and other participants? Do we have sufficient knowledge? Who will invest in the new renewable sources? And what are the sources of financing this transition? Responses to these questions will determine the uh, speed and success of the transition of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miljevic, for this very interesting uh, presentation. Well, you uh, gave your conclusion. You concluded your presentation with the questions who will lead this uh, transition and what would be the role of higher levels of government. Can you uh, share your opinion on how you see this uh, process in Bosnia-Herzegovina, how, in, in your opinion, it should uh, continue? Well, in my opinion, the current situation is the following. Higher levels of government in Bosnia-Herzegovina think that electroprivredas in Bosnia-Herzegovina can do this. Unfortunately, electroprivredas power companies are in such financial situation that they cannot be the leaders of transition. Just to share one thing, the total income of all electroprivredas is 1.9 billion convertible marks, and their profit in 2020 was 19 point uh, five million so if you see this ratio between total revenues and profits it becomes obvious that they cannot uh, finance this transition on their own and that's why i'm asking this question because what we have on the other hand is the fact that we have over six billion euros of savings of citizens and businesses that is just sitting around and in my opinion that money of should be used, of course, not the whole amount, but one part of it for this process. Thank you. We don't have any questions for the time being from our audience, so I suggest that we continue. Thank you, Nadira. Now I have the honor to announce our next speaker, a lady this time, uh, Ms. Claudia Strambo. She comes from the Stockholm Institute, Environmental Institute. She's been working there as a researcher on the uh, climate and energy policies as a, and as a part of the development of the environmental uh, strategy and uh, action plan. She's working on social issues, gender equality and uh, poverty. Her presentation will concern the principles of transition and lessons learned, please. Thank you very much, Professor, um, and hello to everybody. Thank you for the invitation to participate today. Um, so we just saw now that there are both economic and environmental factors driving the transition away from coal in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now this shift will have significant implication for workers and communities that depend on coal for their livelihood. So this raises a very important question how to navigate this shift in a fair way, how to mitigate the hardships the transition implies, and how to ensure the opportunities it brings about are distributed fairly across society. And this is where the concept of just transition comes in. So this concept broadly questions how transition processes and outcomes can be made equitable. Now, there is not a proof to recipe as to how to plan and implement a just transition. What it looks like uh, will vary greatly in different contexts. But we can use a set of principles to help guide practical action. And so I will now talk about seven principles that we developed with my colleague Aaron Attridge based on past cases of uh, industrial and mining transition and existing literature, what is happening now with just transition and um, 
just let you know that um, there is a translated version of our original work that is available on the project's website and some additional materials in English um, that you can consult if you're interested. So what are these seven principles? The, the first one is that um, we need to actively encourage decarbonization. So some might be tempted to postpone climate actions because it's particularly difficult, because there are other short-term priorities, because there are limited resources, but just a uh, just transition is a transition that is in line with achieving globally agreed climate goals. And that means a swift decline in uh, greenhouse gas emissions globally. In addition to that, we know things will not get better for coal. So delaying action means delaying transition planning and investments. And at the end, this is likely to make uh, the outcome um, worse overall. The second principle is about avoiding the creation of carbon lock-in and uh, to have more people uh, that are dependent on the carbon intensive sector and would be affected by, by its decline. So here it's about avoiding investments or other forms of public support like fossil fuel subsidies uh, to carbon intensive industry or fossil fuel production. And it's also about making sure that policies do not reinforce the dependence of other businesses on these sectors. The third principle is about supporting affecting regions. So uh, to maintain uh, their economic vitality and stability. And here, past cases of industrial transition have shown that um, it's really important to build on existing regional and local assets. Um, other practical recommendations include focusing on increasing connectivity between carbon intensive regions and surrounding regions, and particularly linking urban and rural areas. Another practical um, thing to do here is investing in universal infrastructure, like transport, communication, education, which brings benefits and opportunities to a wider number of people. The fourth principle is about supporting workers, their families and the wider community that uh, is affected by, by, by decline. And uh, here to support workers in the transition, we should use a combination of measures to help them find new livelihoods on one side and on the other side measures to ensure that adequate social protections are available when they cannot be reemployed. And in practice, that means providing reskilling or upskilling to workers affected by the transition and ensuring that these programs are also available for workers, families and the wider community. And it also means providing additional forms of personal support like job seeking support, mental health counseling and financial planning. The fifth principle is about cleaning up environmental damage and ensuring that related costs are not transferred from the private to the public sector. And here beyond the obvious environmental and uh, human health reasons for doing that, there are also an economic rational um, environmental rehabilitation is also a source of jobs. And it's uh, key to ensure that the land can be repurposed and used for other social and economic activities. The sixth principle is about addressing existing economic and social inequalities. And so here the idea is that when we design just transition support measures, when we assess regional economic opportunities or when we prioritize transition support, social equity and the empowerment of vulnerable social groups must always be an explicit goal. And in practice, this means, for example, including measures targeted at addressing gender inequality as part of just transition plans, and it also means that we need indicators that go beyond the typical indicators of job creation, diversity of manufacturing, regional economic growth. We also need indicators that gives us information about what kinds of jobs are being created and who has access to them and what are the levels of the broader community resilience and innovation that is being achieved. And the last principle is about um, is a process principle, and it's about making sure that uh, there is an inclusive and transparent planning process. And so this process should be based on a wide social dialogue that involves actors at um, a higher level of government, but also local level of government. And this is important because a deliberate inclusive process of social dialogue can increase public ownership and acceptance of the transition, and it reduces conflict. And we know from past transition, actually, that engaging productively with trade unions, for instance, contributes to achieve better outcomes for affected uh, workers and communities. So these are the seven principles that can help guide just transition planning. And I just want to emphasize again that there are 
no ready answers as to what a just transition plan should look like in Bosnia and Herzegovina or what should be uh, its aim. And um, this is a process where you have a wide range of societal actors coming together, creating a vision, making a plan together and implementing it. And really the sooner the process starts, the better. Thanks. Hvala gospođo Klaudija Strambo na interesantnom predstavljanju. Veoma važnih... Hvala gospođo Klaudija Strambo na predstavljanju veoma važnih predstavljanja o importantnih elementa o energiji tranziciji u vrlo profesiju. Najvijek predstavljanja je integracija ovih principa koje smo vidjeli i vidjeli in the power transition in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I omitted to say before this presentation to mention, Ms. Nadira uh, said it earlier, you have uh, the option to listen to the translation. You need to select uh, the interpretation uh, icon uh, where you can hear uh, the translation uh, if you need it. I have a question for Claudia. I apologize for interrupting, Professor. Since our next speaker is very limited in time because he has to move on to another event, it's already 20 to 2, uh, uh, perhaps we should move on. Okay, yes, uh, Claudia will stay with us until the end. So in the question and answer sessions, we'll have the opportunity to ask her the question. Thank you, thank you for this reminder. Okay then. I suggest uh, we move on. We have here with us Mr. Nikolaus Kuzas, who uh, is working as an officer for public policy issues. He is an um, expert member of the main directorate for energy, DG Energy of European Commission. He's been a uh, director of research in the Center for Research and Technology Health Institute for Chemical Processes in the Athens. And then he's a member of of the editorial board uh, and he published over 300 uh, articles, papers. And Dr. Nikolaus, please, the floor is yours. Hello, <clears throat> good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for the invitation, first of all. Thank you, the organizers, thank you, Professor. Uh, I would like to, to say thank you for the introduction to myself. Uh, it's an honor for me to participate in this meeting. And uh, it's uh, actually, I will I substitute uh, Anna, Anna Sobsak, who is, who is uh, the main person in, responsible in our unit in DG, Trend, in DG Energy, uh, European Commission for uh, this initiative. So please let me, uh, can I have next slide, please? Can I have next slide? Thank you. Um, so I would like to say a few words about um, the the European Commission's Green Deal. So the main the main um, purpose is to cut greenhouse gases uh, by at least fifty five percent by twenty thirty. This is compared to uh, one uh, one thousand nine ninety ninety levels. Uh, that's that's the priority. This is the political the the political pri policy priority for all of us in the European Commission, and this this is going to make Europe climate neutral by 2050. So the, we have a logo saying that uh, leave no one behind, and that that's uh, to support the people in coal regency transition. Can I have next slide, please? So to, to do that, we need to improve the quality of life uh, of these generations, not only the current generations, but also the future generations. So what, what we would li we'd like to do is to help to ensure uh, a just and inclusive transition, first of all. Second is to protect the human life, to restore bio biodiversity and cut pollution. Third is to move 
to a clean and circular economy. Fourth is to help companies become world leaders in clean products and technologies. And fifth, to lead by example as a global leader. Because I have to remind you here that the European Commission, the European Union is, is a leader on that now. Can I have the next slide, please? So as also Franz Timmerman said, they, which is the, who's the executive vice president of the European Commission, we don't, we, we, we have to, uh, to, to show solidarity with the most affected regions in Europe, which, is our, the, which are the coal mining regions. So, and we need to give full support uh, to, to them. Can I have next slide, please? More particular for the, uh, for the European Union initiative uh, for coal regions in transition. That's launched some years ago, actually in December 2017. So what we have, we have an open forum for a stakeholder dialogue with a wider, wider community. As you can see from the map of Europe uh, in, in the slide, we cover most of, most of Europe. So we cover 14 EU member states. And, this, and these are uh, related, these regions are related not only to coal, hard coal, but also lignite, but also, also oil sales. So we have, for instance, Greece, which is my country uh, from origin, origin country. We rely very much on lignite for the electricity production. And now we decrease this lignite production for electricity uh, quite drastically, but at the same at the same time we need to deal with this um, coal phase out and to go to clean energy transition. The same is going to happen in Spain. In Spain, they have already established some just transition fund for the coal regions in transition, but you can see also the same in other countries like Germany, Poland, Czech Republic, Ireland for Pete, uh, Finland for Pete and other countries, Romania and Bulgaria, which are, which are neighbors to ours. So can I have the next slide, please? What we have is as a dialogue, uh, what we try to do is to to do the decarbonization energy production uh, by, of course, phasing out uh, the extraction of uh, fossil fuels, but at the same time to address uh, uh, reskilling and upskilling needs, and at the same time also to diversify the local economy. How we do that, the European Commission and local administration, plus the social partners, civil society, industry, trade unions, NGOs, and academias. So it's, it's, a, it's a collective uh, it's a work, uh, and we need to assist the regions uh, in this energy transition. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, I can give you an example of the um, technical assistance that we provide uh, as the European Commission together with the Secretariat for Technical Assistance to Regions in Transition named START to some countries. So we have seven pilot regions. Uh, as you can see, Czech, uh, Czechia, Greece, uh, Ireland, Poland, two, two regions in Poland, Romania, and Spain. So we have already um, carried out work on guidance materials. So we have methodologies, reports, toolkits. Uh, we provided webinars dedicated to five toolkits. As you can see in the slide, the toolkits are related to transition strategies, environmental rehabilitation and repurposing, sustainable employment and welfare welfare support and governance of transition. Can I have next slide, please? As it concerns now the uh, EU Western Balkans dialogue on Green Deal. As you can see in this slide and starting from the down, uh, we have already started the 21st of February, 2019. 
uh, a statement, a clean energy statement uh, uh, for the transition for the Western Balkans. And then we move uh, October 2020 to economic and plan, investment plan and green agenda for the Western Balkans. And finally, uh, November 2020, the declaration of Western Balkans leaders on green agenda at Sofia Sim Summit under the Berlin process. So what was agreed was agreed to fully endorse the green agenda for the Western Balkans to commit to work towards the 2050 targets of carbon neutral continent, to strive to decrease and gradually phase out of coal, coal subsidies, and of course, uh, to participate actively in the coal regions in transition initiative for the Western Balkans. Can I have the next slide, please? For Ukraine, because this is a, an, an initiative for both Western Balkans and Ukraine, we did a, a EU-Ukraine summit October 2020. So welcome Ukraine's ambitions to approximate its policies and the legislation with the European Green Deal. So we stress the importance of progress in Ukraine's commitments in the areas of climate change environment, marine ecosystem, education, energy, transport, and agriculture. And we agreed on, fo on a focused dialogue on the necessary steps in this area. So we provide a memorandum of understanding um, that's, that's what that was before that. So at the end of the day, we had a ministerial meeting on the 3rd of December, 2020, agreed on a work plan for 2021. Can I have next slide, please? So the main principles for this initiative of color regions already mentioned before is the World Bank, Energy Community, the College of Europe, European Bank, European Investment Bank, and the National Fund for Environmental Protection and Water Management, as well as the European Commission. Can I have the next slide, please? So what is about this initiative? We need to open platform for a region-wide multi-stakeholder dialogue with sharing experience, knowledge, and best practices on transition-related issues. Twinnings, exchange, and transfers of knowledge, experience, and best practice on transition-related issues between European Union, the Western Balkans, and Ukraine. Call Academy on transition-related issues, providing dedicated trainings on governance, community engagement, environmental reclamation, repurposing of land and assets for relevant stakeholders. I, I think I have to say here that, I, especially for la land reclamation and repurposing land, this, uh, this work has already started in other countries. And this probably we have some very good examples from, previ from pre countries previous mentioned. Technical assistance, we have an expert support to pilot regions to develop transition roadmaps to be used and implemented by relevant public authorities. And finally, access to financing for transition projects or programs. Can I have next slide, please? How this is gonna be reality? We open to all stakeholders of the initiatives. We share state of play and progress of the transition in, in participating coal regions in Western Balkans and Ukraine. Share transition related experience and good practice, practices originated from the regions uh, or from other areas in the world. We have Appalachian, for instance, from the United States, including the United European Union. Small scale events, approximately up to 50 participants, organized in specific areas, regions. Open to stakeholders of the initiative with an interest in this specific area and raising awareness about the transition at the local level, allowing for uh, a broader participation at, of local stake, stakeholders than platform of academy meetings. So, 
Can I have next slide, slide please? So this, all this, uh, you, I can, we have put here, uh, indicate the, the sites, the links. So for the EU initiative for polar agency transition, you can see the link, you can Google everything. You can, you can get all the information we have uh, from this site. For the initiative for coal agency transition in Western Balkans and Ukraine, next, of course, and another one for coal learning academy. So please, you are very welcome to see all these uh, sites and to make your comments and to uh, also even to tweet to the European, to energy for DG Energy of the European Commission. And we are here to support. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Nikolaos. Thank you very much for taking the time to stay with us. Uh, I will try to use these five minutes before you leave. And uh, I would like to ask you a question. When we discuss uh, the beginning of uh, planning for transition, what do you think are the main challenges uh, with, uh, within this initiative? Uh, the main challenges are, um, we have uh, some examples from the European Union, from other countries. So the main challenge now in this initiative is to transfer knowledge from other countries. There are countries like, for instance, Germany, Belgium, even France, uh, Central European countries, they have very much uh, work on coal phase out, even uh, 20, 30 years ago. And we have examples uh, of, let's say, good, good examples of this coal phase out. So we now need to go to Western Balkans and Ukraine to find, uh, of course, there are dif different, different options, different mines, different power plants. Uh, so, but, but we need to see from what happened in the past and how we, we need to see how we need to proceed now uh, with these countries. Because I think to my understanding and also what the understanding is from the European Commission, I think all of the team working in this coal regions transition is that we need to go fast to, uh, to renewable energy. We, of course, I understand that we have, uh, we rely very much on coal now, and this is not an easy exercise to all of us, but we need to go taking into consideration good examples from the past from other countries as well thank you very much dr nicolas uh, would could you single out any benefits that uh, the or, or advantage that the western balkan countries have in this process The, the benefits of Western Balkan uh, countries is that um, as far as I, I can understand from also from the rest of Europe is the sooner you go to call phase out, the sooner you get uh, green electricity, the sooner you get um, a better environment, a better environment. Uh, we now go to electromobility we now go to renew, renewables will already be there. Uh, but I think as soon as we go, it's better to have for our societies, it's better for the Western Balkans to trans, trans, to, to, to move to, uh, to, to more friendly environment um, society. Thank you very much once again. We are very happy to have had you here. And uh, if you have any questions for Dr. Nikolaos, you can uh, send them to Q&A section and Dr. Nikolaos will answer the question after the webinar. And I suggest we move Thank on. You. Our next guest presenter, Thank you. Uh, 
My video was off for a while, but uh, it was recovered. Our next uh, guest is Mr. Alexander Spohr. He is head of Just Transition Research Program. He has a uh, longstanding experience over 15 years of working experience in Polish public administration and in coal sector in particular. It is important to stress that he comes from Poland, uh, which was heavily reliable on coal and it is still reliable uh, it still relies on coal but it is uh, engaged now in intensive uh, tra energy transition process he uh, will uh, discuss the territorial uh, transition and experience from poland and i believe that uh, we will be able to adopt and implement some lessons learned from poland in bosnia and herzegovina mr spor the floor is yours. Excuse me, Mr. Alexander, we cannot hear you. We could hear something now. No. Well, I uh, suggest that we do a little, uh, a small exercise uh, while we are waiting for Mr. Alexander to uh, fix the technical problems. Do you agree, Professor? Okay. I propose that Mr. Alexander restarts the computer or uh, restarts the Zoom, downloads the uh, most recent version, and uh, we will uh, hear him after this uh, exercise. On the Mentimeter. I hope you can all see my screen. So we are again at the Menti application. I'm kindly asking you to go to the menti.com and uh, type in the code 15144496 and answer the question. Thank you. Excellent. We have we are getting more and more responses. For the time being, most of the participants think that the biggest challenge in energy transition are jobs, job availability, and then regional uh, economy. Also strengthening uh, or increasing social uh, inequity. Jobs are still leading. We already have 42 responses. I hope we'll get more because we uh, would really like to uh, hear uh, what your thoughts, uh, what are your major concerns. 
regarding this whole process. Forty-eight responses. Great. Forty-nine responses. Jobs are still the leading challenge has been recognized as such by our participants. And uh, one other thing which I can't uh, really see very well since I'm sharing screen, I hope Professor Husika access to energy, availability of energy. After that, we have uh, increased uh, social inequity and regional economy. So let's wait until we get the number uh, 60 of responses and then we'll continue. I hope that Mr. Alexander managed to fix his uh, sound problem uh, by then. We did have a test at 12 and everything was working fine, but now technology is failing us, <laughs> but I hope uh, that will be fixed uh, easily. 52 responses, okay. I think that's uh, where we are going to stop. So the most concerning challenges regarding the energy transition, the first one is jobs, second uh, access to energy, increased uh, social inequity and rehabilitation of devastated regions and regional economy. So I will stop sharing screen now and uh, we are going back to Mr. Alexander to see whether uh, the uh, microphone is working, like whether the sound is working. We can't hear you. No. Unfortunately, no. Nadira, I propose that we move on to, with the next presentation. And uh, during that time, we'll try to fix this. Well, that's uh, uh, also what I wanted to propose. Ms. Uh, our Zoom host uh, will help Alexander and we'll move on to the next presentation. That's the presentation by Dr. Rachel Perks. Dr. Rachel Perks is a senior mining expert in the World Bank uh, with uh, a long experience in extractive industries. Before she joined the World Bank, she worked and lived for 20 years in the Horn and Central uh, African Horn and Central Africa. She has worked on managing the transition from conflict to peace in countries where natural resources have played a role in conflict, and she participated played a catalytic role in, in state building. Currently, Dr. Perks plays a leading role in development of the World Bank's activities on just transition, including in Bosnia-Herzegovina context. Dr. Perks, the floor is yours. Great, thank you. Can I confirm that you can hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you and see you. Great, it's wonderful to be here. Um, thank you for the invitation. And it's also nice to see so many uh, uh, colleagues and friends that I've come to know over the last few years of working in the just transition space. Uh, I really appreciated some of the initial comments, the assistant minister's uh, brief overview of our work uh, with him. Also our European Commission colleagues, we have been working hand in hand with them since 2017 on uh, just transition and coal regions, both in the European context and also now in Western Balkans and Ukraine. It was nice to see Damir, who I've come to know through the Secretariat Group for Western Balkans and Ukraine Coal Regions and Transition Initiative. Claudia, I appreciated your principles. I thought that was a very good scene setting for the event today. And uh, I look forward to hearing Francisco's interventions about EPRD's work in this space in Bosnia and Herzegovina. 
So this is a very important first dialogue, I would say, uh, that is a crucial aspect of the work that, that we promote, the idea of people being able to gather, to discuss, to be able to share their concerns, but also their optimism about transition. And so I really want to commend uh, the Stockholm Environmental Institute for putting this together with their partners in Bosnia Herzegovina today. Next slide, please. I wanted to start with a very important part of the quote. Our new climate change action plan will be going to the board next week. We are very proud of it. It sets a very ambitious agenda for the World Bank when it comes to climate change for the next decade. And in it, we have been working very closely with a number of other departments in the World Bank to ensure that the question of cold transition placed front and center. And this is an excerpt of a quote from our president who has taken the decision along with senior management and the board to place the issue of coal regions in transition at the heart of our climate change action plan. And we look forward to the public version that will be available by July 1st. Next slide, please. This is an important map that sort of shows that we often talk that the world is sort of in two phases at the moment. As you can see in the context of Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, still parts of the US, we continue actually to have a increased demand for coal production and coal consumption. And this is part of the world. The other part of the world, which pr primarily fits to a degree in North America, also uh, in the European context, and now soon in the Western Balkans and in places like Ukraine, a diminishment in the demand for coal, coal production and coal fired energy. The purpose of this slide is to show that all, although uh, there is an acceleration that is going on currently on the global scene, it is very much an uneven acceleration and one that requires us to be very mindful of the fact that countries all over the world are facing very different stages of their energy transition. Next slide, please. In the second slide here, we are talking about the types of market and policy forces which are continuing really to erode the profitability of coal in every country. We've heard a bit of this context uh, setting from down here in the context of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now, what has become crucially evident is that in most places, countries are really not prepared for the magnitude of this transition. And there are a lot of vested interests which make the early planning of transition both very crucial, but also very at the very same time, very challenging. So there's evidently the question of individual workers who do not want to be left behind, coal companies who clearly still have, have the concern for profits to be made, the political elite who are sometimes um, tied to interests in the coal sector, and then obviously the fiscal gaps that are going to arise as the industry winds down, which places incredible strain on municipalities and regional governments in particular to be able to fill those fiscal gaps particularly for service delivery. Next slide, please. So when we talk about a just transition, and I'm going to explain our own definition in the World Bank, uh, we're really talking about a situation in which we have a variation across the globe in the speed and scope of decarbonization, which has now become even more accelerated with new targets that have been set forth. And because we have this speed and scope that is very different across the world, in every country where the World Bank engages, we take a very pragmatic approach that's tailored to the unique challenges, but also the opportunities that each coal region in a country is facing. So in the case of Bosnia Herzegovina, when we were invited by the Ministry of Foreign Trade and External Relations to come and assist with some early stage planning, we spent a lot of time to understand what the key priority challenges were across 
the Federation, the Republic, and the state level. And we've spent a lot of time dialoguing municipalities to arrive at a scope of work that we're now undertaking with the ministry that is very much tailored to the needs of where Bosnia and Herzegovina is. Next slide, please. This is a quote that I'm sure we've all been ruminating over the last few days since the release of EIA's recent report. And it really just shows the dramatic nature of the current energy transition that we are under. And one that, as I think one of our uh, opening speakers talked about, Mr. Oprasic, it really requires a common approach, both at a national level and at a global level. And we hope to show you some of what we are doing to be part of that global community. Next slide. So as we know, the pressure to accelerate the transition is rapidly increasing. You know, the latest uh, figures coming out of the Energy Transition Council, which is the body that has been set up by the government of the UK in the lead up to COP26. Their predictions are that in order for us to meet the Paris Climate Agreement goals, coal phase out has to accelerate by four times its current pace. And you can see what that means in actual fact, in terms of what the inputs of various sources of energy will have to be, and the dramatic changes in coal phase out in particular by 2030, and then obviously by 2050. Next slide, please. In these predictions that have been done by the IEA's latest report, we note that in order to achieve the net zero emission scenario, which the bank uh, supports, the OECD credit countries would need to phase out coal entirely by 2030 and other countries by 2040. And as we started to see in the presentations this afternoon, we are far from being at that, being in a capacity to be able to reach those types of targets in such a short amount of time. And the real question or the concern that we often raise within the World Bank is how do we the accelerated energy transition in line with a just transition, because we don't want to see a decoupling of these two processes in order to ensure that really no one is left behind. Next slide, please. So when we think about job loss, and it was interesting to see, but not that that was the top priority of those on, on the webinar today. Uh, we often think about jobs that are in uh, the coal mines and in the thermal power plants. And more specifically, historically, we've thought about jobs that are unionized. So meaning direct workers who are engaged uh, in companies with benefit packages, with retirement packages, et cetera. What we have come to learn is that there has been such a radical uh, reform of the coal industry across the world over the last decade that we now find ourselves in a situation where in most countries, the coal industry jobs have actually been uh, contracted out, meaning that we no longer have a large percentage of people who are in unionized jobs. What that means is that the types of uh, packages or the types of social protection measures government used to consider as a means to help to bridge the gaps of job transition have to be different because we have a much larger percentage of individuals who are actually not covered by typical, you know, full benefited jobs. And if we look beyond, obviously, the coal mine itself, so this green sphere, we move into what we call the coal value chain and the indirect uh, sphere of jobs. And these are, these are jobs that are often hidden in the statistics, because when we look at sort of impacts, we typically look at the amount of people who may be registered in mining and quarrying. But here we see you know, construction workers, people who are providing technology services to mines, people who may be providing other types of technical solutions to the mines and the thermal power plants. 
And so in the work that we do in countries, we do a very detailed analysis of this entire coal value chain to understand the impacts. But then when we move into to the purple sphere, then we start to look at what are the real fiscal impacts in communities. So the idea of how a diminishment of salaries and diminishment of taxation has an effect on all the business and suppliers who actually version these communities because of the existence of coal mines and the thermal power plant. So it's this type of very detailed thorough analysis that the bank undertakes and which we are currently uh, undertaking in the context of Bosnia and Herzegovina with Maftar, with the Republika uh, Srpska, and with the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Next slide, please. I wanted to touch briefly upon uh, this question of the just transition. And as I was uh, alluding to before, you know that the term just transition is very much rooted in the International Trade Union Congress's uh, definition. They were the first to put it forward. And again, it was very much focused on unionized formal labor. But given the current state of the coal sector globally and the concerns that we have for what a just transition should encompass, the World Bank has put forth its own definition. We talk about a just transition for all. And the idea here is that no one is less left behind in the transition to clean energy. We not only talk about jobs and about people, but we also talk very much about the need for policies and plans that have to be in place, the mobilization of investments, the catalyzing effects that land remediation and repurposing can have, and also the community support that's needed in this post-transition period. Next slide. So we've actually been working on coal sector transition for decades now. Our first projects were in the 1980s, 1990s across Poland, Romania, Russia, and Ukraine. We've also been working in other countries. Uh, and more recently, we've been involved in EC countries and also now in Bosnia, Herzegovina, Ukraine, and Serbia. And over the time, we've been able to produce several documents and I can put them in the chat, the links in the chat later. But essentially we've taken all of our learning since the 1980s to come up with a new framework that we apply when we start to plan and prepare with countries on these questions of coal transition. And you'll see on the left-hand side here, some of the key lessons that we've taken from our work in the 1980s and 1990s We've taken stock of what worked and what didn't, and now we've started to apply these things to our current engagements across the globe. So obviously the need to move beyond planning at the national level and really bring communities and coal regions into that planning process in the way that is very inclusive. The need to strengthen stakeholder engagement and consultations, prioritizing land values and how we can repurpose former mining lands for economic development looking at questions of harmonized regional planning and also ensuring that, you know, we recognize that there are a lot of deep vested interests in the continuation of coal and how we can engage with those interests in a way that is mutually satisfactory. Next slide, please. So, and we can move to the next slide. So what is the path forward to the bank? We've come up with an approach really recognizes that in fact, these transitions have three key phases. The first phase, what we call pre-closure, and this is really a phase that is focused on planning. And that is where most of the countries would be in the Western Balkans, in Ukraine, and, and even similarly in a lot of countries uh, in the East. And this is where we're really focusing on understanding the problem and thinking about solutions and really at this stage talking to everyone and anyone who would be affected to understand what are stakeholder concerns. In the second phase of transition, this is really almost the most straightforward because it's about closure, but the closure of mines and formal power plants, doing these in ways that respond to national legislation, but also best practice internationally. And then in the third phase, this is the most challenging, the longest, the most difficult, and the one where we have to be realistic about change. This is the regional transition phase, which really focuses on now moving towards a new economy and bringing people 
along on that journey. We just finished a major analysis of the cold transition in the Appalachian region of the US. Still 60 years on with significant national and state level investments, that transition continues to have to be well led and well followed. So it demonstrates that the commitment to transition is something that will not be over five years, but likely over multiple decades. Next slide, please. So I wanted to speak briefly about our framework. This is one of two remaining slides that I have. So you'll see on the left-hand side, these phases that I just talked about. So in the case of Bosnia-Herzegovina, we are currently in this pre-closure planning phase where as uh, Assistant Minister said, we're hoping to arrive at the beginnings of a plan for transition uh, in, the, in the fall of 2021. And we take a very systematic approach to planning where we have three key pillars. The first being institutional governance. So this goes to the point that Dr. Prasik raised earlier about the need for a national team, a national committee. And we are in fact working with MOFTRA at the moment to provide recommendations on what such a high level government body could look like what would be its terms of reference, what would be its composition, because I fully agree that there's a need for a common approach. We also in this phase do a lot of stakeholder engagement, as I said, and really ensuring that we have a clear understanding of which mines are closing when, which thermal plants, the people to be affected, and how we can start to put all of this data together into a comprehensive plan. The second pillar is on people and communities. There's a lot of work to be done in all the phases. In the case of Bosnia-Herzegovina, uh, at the moment, we're doing all of the labor profiling work where we're understanding all of the mines, all of the thermal plants, what are the existing labor that are direct, but also now we're going to move into a phase with Mokhtar where we will be looking at the indirect labor. So those that are not formally employed by the mines and the thermal plants, but who work in the coal sector. And so we will be doing in-depth pilot area analysis starting in the fall of 2021. And then the third pillar is really on land and environmental remediation. This is the most important aspect that continues to be overlooked. The, the opportunity that land provides to really be an economic regenerator. So for instance, in certain countries where we've been working you know, there's a possibility to turn open pit mines into floating solar stations or to create battery storage sites. It could also be to create business parks. We've been having some interesting discussions with the municipality of Branovici where they're interested in seeing how they can create business parks and form a mining wise to attract investment. So this is really the phase that has been most overlooked in a lot of the past work. Across Europe, we have brownfields that are really unusable at the moment. And our intention is to help government, municipalities, regional authorities to find ways to address the social and the environmental liabilities of these lands in order to make them available for new investment, in order to create jobs. The next slide, please. So in this last slide, this is just to demonstrate where we are active at the moment and the types of work that we're undertaking. So where we are actively involved in assisting governments in planning for closure, whether it's mines or thermal power plants. We currently have a very large engagement in China, in South Africa, Morocco, uh, many parts of Europe, Poland, Bulgaria, uh, Serbia, Ukraine, Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, and then in, if we were to move into places where we're doing a lot of knowledge sharing and information um, sharing, we have uh, certain parts of, of Europe and, and also the Western Balkans as well. And then areas where we believe are priorities, but where we haven't engaged much to date and we intend to in the near future. One I would say uh, that we don't often talk about is Colombia. In, in South Latin America. And the last one of our knowledge partners, the US, Canada, uh, the UK, uh, France, Germany. And I would highlight that in the case of the US, we recently hosted along with 
the uh, Secretariat for the Western Balkans and Ukraine Platform Initiative, a very good first 20 between the municipality of Branovici and uh, a number of stakeholders from Appalachia. And we will be doing a follow-up 20 in September of 2021. We will be extending that to another three or four municipalities who at, uh, in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina have, who have requested to participate. And we will be making that 20 available to other stakeholders, including anyone who is here today. Please do get in touch with either myself with Assistant Minister Softit or with the Secretariat of the Western Balkans and Ukraine Platform Initiative if you wish to participate. So with that, I will end and uh, welcome any questions. Hvala vam, gospođo Perks. Imamo par pitanja za vas. Thank you, Ms. Perks. Uh, we have several questions for you in Q&A section. I will read two. One is from Ecoforum from Zenica. I will read it in the in English. I don't want to make any confusion. Nothing should be lost in translation. I think hydropower generation will decrease as it was shown in the slide. Predictions are good for solar and wind, but hydro, considered as the best alternative to coal in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, will remain less than 20%. Mm -hmm. I hope you managed to, to hear me. Yeah, so if I understood correctly, the question is around the IEA graph and the predictions around hydrogen and uh, sorry hydro and and that in bosnia herzegovina yeah we are working with uh Mokhtar on on small hydro plants and certainly believe that it is one of many sources i think the key is that energy diversification has to respond obviously to the constraints and the security of the country we don't make any advocacy for what that mix will look like we typically follow the plans, the policies, and the objectives of the government. And in this case, it would be whatever the government is working on within the context of the national environmental and climate plans. Hvala vam, gospođo Perks. Uh, imamo još jedno pitanje uh, od gospođe Marime Karabegović. Za koju vrstu pomoći... One more question se... from Ms. Karabegović. For what kind of assistance uh, can a region or a municipality um, uh, request? Mm -hmm. well, multiple of requests that could be made, typically because the World Bank operates or dialogues principally with the national levels of government. In this case, it would be the state entity. The best way is for municipalities or for regions to organize their requests up to the state level obviously through uh, their federation entities and, and uh, this, the, the republic entities. Uh, but any types of requests for transition are typically well received. What we like to encourage is this comprehensive planning process so that we're not receiving requests which are for a specific project, but more uh, a cohesive to demonstrate that the requests are part of a cohesive transition plan. So typically when uh, the types of assistance that we would give would be anything from uh, clean energy transition, so assistance with renewables, to looking at the questions of alternative employment, SME development, uh, land, repurposing, land repurposing and remediation, it could be uh, assistance with the analysis and reforms on certain laws. So the bank really doesn't have many limitations on the type of, of sectors of assistance that we would consider. But the most important piece is that there is a piece of plan in place that demonstrates the thought that's going into other uh, requests. Thank you, Ms. Perks. And uh, let's see if uh, Mr. Alexander resolves his technical problems. We do hope so. I also hope that Mr. Spor resolved his problems and that we will now 
uh, can hear his yeah, I so. I hope so experience too. from Poland. Great. I understand that you can hear me right now. Is it yes, correct? Yes, we can hear yes. you perfectly. Okay. Yes. Thank you yes, very much. Yes, we can hear you um, very well. I'm but really sorry about the technical problems, so uh, please excuse me. Uh, I'm terribly sorry about that. I hope I will, I will uh, with my presentation, I will uh, make the time spent on, on waiting uh, uh, count. So let me just, without further ado, start with, the, with my presentation. So I was asked today to, to uh, talk about the Polish experiences with planning uh, the transition uh, about territorial just transition, transition plans. And I'm going to do that, but before that, uh, just for those who are not very familiar with uh, Poland and uh, coal sector in Poland, let me just start from the short overview uh, um, of the coal regions in Poland. So please, uh, let's go to the uh, next slide. Um, so, um, We've got in Poland uh, six major uh, regions where the coal is produced. We've got one minor, so I won't, uh, so I won't, I will ignore it for uh, for this presentation. Uh, so we've got three regions uh, where you, where we produce uh, hard coal, uh, and three others where we produce lignite, and probably the most well known among, uh, abroad is the Silesia. Uh, where uh, both the um, coal production uh, and employment in coal sector are uh, the highest. Um, so this is more most coal intensive regions. And this six regions, they, they differ very much for, for at different levels. Um, firstly, uh, some are remote areas uh, as for instance, um, uh, Lower Silesia is, is the case and the uh, power plant in Turów, which is recently also famous for the border conflict reason. Uh, and the other, the opposite would be uh, Upper Silesia, where, um, where, which is densely populated industrialized region where many different sectors of, of the economy are functioning well. The, the economy of the region is also uh, quite vibrant. So uh, although the, the, there is a lot of coal mines and the problems are there, uh, this is also the region which can relatively manage well this, this transition. And uh, there are also, of, of course, different features. Also the time where the, where the coal power plants or lignite power plants were, uh, were installed were built uh, matters so in the upper silesia the tradition of coal mining is 200 years whereas in uh, mo uh, whereas in lignite regions for instance uh, this tradition reaches not uh, further than the 50s uh, so uh, so the 1950s of course so so in that sense the cultural aspects are different also in and the tradition of coal mining is different in each region now given different differences uh, um, between the regions uh, each of them is planning currently different uh, time horizon for coal phase out so uh, which span between 2025 or 2030 the latest for conin which is the Wielkopolska uh, uh, region in poland and this is the only private coal and power plant uh, in the coal mine and power plant in Poland, whereas all the others are public or um, controlled or owned by the, by the state. So this is the case where uh, where my foundation is the foundation was quite active and is quite active as this is the region which moves ahead the fastest among compared to others. Um, and this is kind of uh, a lesson probably to learn to, for other Polish regions, which are kind of uh, more puzzled with, with, the, with the whole process. And to my understanding, they will look uh, for, this, uh, for this region to, you know, to, to, take, to draw the lessons from, from there. You have uh, other regions as mostly hard coal regions, which are um, phasing out coal, which are postponing uh, as much as possible the coal hard coal phase out uh, in Poland. So for Silesia, it's currently uh, 2049. 
For other two regions, it is not clear. It can be, uh, it can, it could be the same date. Uh, but for instance, Małopolskie is probably considering to phase out coal um, much earlier. Um, so the dates are still, uh, the dates are sometimes there, but none of them is pretty definite and sure. Um, so, so, so the, the process is, uh, is uh, of setting the date is quite open. And this process is probably, and let me go to the next slide. This, this process of setting the dates for coal phase out is probably triggered the most by the European Commission, which came up with, the, uh, of course, the um, European Green Deal. And with this mechanism, which was also um, mentioned earlier, this just transition mechanism, which offers to uh, the regions in the EU uh, that decides to phase out coal, and um, financial, but also technical support uh, in, uh, in this process. So the commission, um, of course, wants to make sure that this, this famous slogan uh, uh, of um, leaving no one behind materialize. And that is why it offers a certain um, support. Of course, the commission goal is to make sure that no greenwashing, no uh, that the actual transition will take place, and and won't there won't be any greenwashing uh, or projects which could uh, prolong the uh, the existence of coal uh, in the in the energy mix. Um, of course, you've got the two other important actors, the the direct partner of the European Commission since the beginning uh, meant to be they meant to be the regions, and they role. Uh, which is expected is to define the, uh, their challenges, their needs, and to come up with projects with uh, objectives until 2030, uh, which, which uh, framed in a, in a territorial just transition plans would uh, constitute a basis for a transfer of uh, financial and technical uh, support. Um, of course, there is third part. Third uh, part in this process, there are central governments, uh, and this is also of course a Polish Polish case, which uh, may needs to make sure that the other structural, for instance, policies, so the so the uh, cohesion funds uh, or structural funds are uh, aligned with the targets and and policies uh, within the just transition mechanism. Um, also, their part is to make sure that the balancing, balancing of support between different regions is, is, uh, is taking place. Um, and, and yeah, so th these are the three actors which are, uh, which are important in this process. So this is kind of, uh, if I may use the, the theoretical term, this is kind of um, procedural justice, uh, how it's uh, implemented, and if uh, um, um, so, sorry, is it so that this is distributional justice? So, making sure the commission making sure that the uh, resources are distributed uh, fairly and in partnership with regions and the government. And now, as for the and let me go to the next slide. Um, now um, about the. Uh, procedural justice, and let me focus here more on Polish case study. Um, we uh, we have in Poland this traditional approach to social dialogue, which since 19th century is based on a private and the private sector on the one hand side, so the companies and the, and the trade unions on the other side, and the and the government, which is kind of. Uh, um, the third part of, of the of the whole process. Now, with the progress of uh, energy transition, with the challenges of climate change, this uh, traditional structure of the social dialogue is no longer uh, fully uh, adjusted to the problems at hand. In the sense that, um, well, in Poland, for instance, uh, hard coal mining trade unions are the strongest among all the trade unions. 
and they have a very strong direct impact on both governments and the companies, of course. And uh, the problem which we are facing now is that the, all the environmental concerns which are external to the problem for the energy mix uh, are not fully represented um, in, in, the, in the dialogue between the three parts. So uh, as long as there is no green, uh, green uh, trade, trade unions, and no green businesses are developed enough or the process of uh, formation of syndicates in that green, green new business is not mature. Uh, the, the, the climate or environmental concerns are not, uh, pro in, in my opinion, they, they're not sufficiently represented. And so probably this is one of the challenges of, of, of the problem. I, I focus in this presentation given the, the, the short time. There's of course many others, but um, if you want to uh, ask the questions whether the whole process of planning um, uh, the territorial just transition plans uh, is realistic or not, um, you need to you need to probably know a few things about Poland, uh, which may be interesting for 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 the other for other countries as well. Um, well, th this is uh, first important thing is that Poland is the only EU member state which currently didn't declare it officially. Um, the, the achieving the target of climate neutrality, as this is the case for the other EU member states. Some of the EU member states indeed uh, pledged uh, to achieve this target earlier. I think that these are four countries now. And uh, depending on this Polish decision, uh, the, in terms of financial support, the Commission uh, may withdraw the half of the resources which are attributed currently to Poland. So this decision, although not being made, I hope it will. St it's still we still have time to to make this decision to adopt the the climate neutrality goal. Uh, this uh, this money would be available fully only if we if we, if we declare this this goal. Um, now, another important thing to know about Poland is that if you look at the, and I, I in my pre previous uh, jobs, I was, I was looking quite um, intensively at the historical process of transition since early 90s in Poland. If you look at the um, subsequent uh, strategies related to uh, energy mix and, um, and coal, uh, coal related policies, uh, you see that there was always this um, hope and uh, so, so, so that in the plans one would forecast the demand for coal much higher than in the, in the, the uh, took, um, was the case. So uh, even now uh, in the current uh, Polish energy policy, which is quite fresh document, uh, uh, this document uh, had, uh, I mean, plans for 2040 uh, energy mix. And even there, you've got quite ambitious as for the preserving coal structure of the energy sector uh, targets. And uh, what is obvious since last uh, three months, I guess, when one observing the when one observes the uh, CO two emissions uh, permits, the, the prices of the CO two emissions permits, um, that the fast uh, rise of the of the of these prices makes very fast, especially lignite sector, uh, and economically unviable. Uh, so the not only the process itself risks to be. Um, Leak, risks to uh, let many people behind. Um, the economy of, of that, uh, or the economics of that process is pretty obvious right now. And only this week, we've got another uh, state-owned company which declared the, the Belhatov uh, lignite power plant, so the biggest lignite power plant in, in Europe, uh, to phase out uh, the production of electricity until 2038. Although previously it was hoping for the much later dates, and this is strictly under the influence um, of the of the current CO two uh, prices. 
Now, so, so to conclude, I guess it's important to know that in current planning for of, of transition in Poland, there, there, there is a consensus and it always was. Um, so on the one hand side, you have many um, think tanks or uh, even government uh, organizations that are planning uh, technical um, technical uh, switch of uh, power of the energy mix uh, towards the low carbon technologies. And, and this is one uh, challenging process. Uh, but on the other hand side, you have uh, trade unions, which um, we, we've got the saying in Poland that the paper is patient. So, uh, so the paper is not very shy, uh, contrary to people. So, so we we have this pressure from trade unions in Poland to make sure that the option for coal to exist much longer uh, is possible as and is on the table. Although, uh, when you look uh, backwards, uh, this this optimist scenario for trade unions that the coal will res uh, will will remain. Will never materialize. So, so the the, the usually the Polish uh, strategies are as the compromise between the two approaches. And also, if you look at and I guess this may be process not only in Poland but other countries. Uh, I think or your country as well, is that the social awareness of climate change or environmental risks uh, is rising, uh, which. Uh, even if not, um, makes no much difference now, uh, will make much more difference in short future. And, and this, is the, this is the final message that I uh, wanted to share with you. I guess what is important to, to know maybe from our last slide, if you look at it, uh, much of work made in Instrat uh, relied on the open data platform which is a trend across different member states. So basically what INSTRA did was gathered many data that was um, fragmented and, and put in different documents, gathered in one uh, precise place, one da database. And based on that, we um, created a model which is um, energy model. Uh, which uh, and having this data and the model um, allows uh, with full transparency uh, monitor the process of um, or the observation of the efficiency of uh, energy sector and so, so the results were recent results that we came up with were pretty clear that economically speaking um, coal, especially lignite, but also hard coal probably in 2040s, uh, are no longer, will no longer be economically justifiable uh, part of the energy mix. And, and this is, um, and this is my probably final remark uh, for now. Thank you very much and feel free to ask the questions. Hvala, gospodine Špor. Zaista... Thank you, Mr. Uh, Spore for this uh, detailed presentation of the Polish uh, case and the process of uh, energy transition. I believe that all of us who were hearing this and invo are involved in the energy transition could find, find uh, in those elements uh, our situation, of course, with the much uh, lower numbers. Uh, now I'm talking about the scope of production, the tons, and we have a lot of questions for you. Some of these questions were answered already by Mr. Uh, Spor, but one very specific question that concerns TPPs running on coal. The question is, when uh, was the uh, most recent uh, or the last new thermal power plant was built in Poland and whether, as it would follow from this uh, discussion, would it be closed before its uh, uh, life expires, so to say? 
Uh, I'm not uh, from my on the from the, from my head. I cannot say about the thermal power plant. Uh, uh, I can, however, say that to my knowledge, uh, uh, recent blocks uh, of energy power plants were built very recently, um, and that uh, if you have if you want to look precisely, this is the data energy data uh, energy insert data base is the right place to do it because you can specifically look at each uh, of the power plants in Poland and, and have exact data. So, so I recommend to use that. But indeed, there is, a, a, there is a high risk and high probability that the newest coal power plants or lignite power plants, the, the blocks in the new power plant units, uh, will be phased out before they uh, reach their economic um, uh so because they are uh, paid back so um it may be the case that in already the investments uh, put in the uh, energy power plants are not reimbursed the instructs one of the papers that i was recommending was on the coal, uh, coal power plant in ostrowenka which was uh, to be built and the thanks to the analysis of the Instrut uh, Foundation, this construction was stopped. So it was quite impactful paper, uh, in a sense that precisely taking uh, taking into account all the data that we could collect, this power plant occurred to be uh, unprofitable. And the currently, to my knowledge, there is a currently currently a legal process uh, of the I think management board. In Poland, for um, mismanagement of economic mismanagement of this investment. Hvala, gospodine Spor, na odgovoru. Imamo još Thank you, Mr. Spor, for, for this answer. We have some questions for you, and we hope you will stay with us until the end. And in this time uh, that we have set for questions and answers, you will uh, be able to answer the rest of the question. And we will continue with our agenda. The next topic is EBRD's initiative of just transition and EBRD's engagement in the Balkans. That's the European Bank for uh, Reconstruction and Development. Our guest is Francesco Orbo. He is the regional leader for energy for the Western Balkans countries in the EBRD in the group for sustainable infrastructure. He has longer experience in financing uh, sustainable energy projects, especially in the developing countries. So Mr. Corbo, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to, to this uh, very important uh, uh, conference. So very, very briefly, uh, you already introduced me. I've been uh, with uh, with the bank for more than 15 years, and uh, I am responsible for the Western Balkans in Croatia. And uh, what is uh, really uh, taking uh, you know all my passion in the in the past uh, period is really our commitment uh, for decarbonization. And uh, the Just Transition Initiative is really one of the uh, instrument that is uh, at the core of our mission in the region. But uh, I mean, uh, keeping interactive, I will go through the through the, um, the presentation. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, with the BRD, we are a multilateral development bank that was established in uh, 1991 for fostering the transition towards open market oriented economies and to promote private entrepreneurial initiatives. Uh, we cover uh, quite a heterogeneous spectrum of countries, and uh, they are very different from a socioeconomically and also in terms of energy structure. Um, we, the, we, we can put on the, the first slide. Uh, so basically, decarbonization and just transition, it's, uh, as mentioned, very important and relevant in the uh, EBRD region. This is because the countries in the EBRD region are much more carbon intensive and coal intensive than the European Union. 15 of our countries of operation have a higher carbon intensity than the world average, and 10 are in the top 20. As seen on the graph, Bosnia is one of the most carbon and energy intensive in the EBRD region. 
the electricity generated from the coal in Bosnia is the highest after Kosovo in the Western Balkan countries, with 70.1% according to data on 2017. Next slides, please. Speaking of coal use, the EBRD region has around 25% of global coal reserves, with the largest located in Kazakhstan, Poland, Russia, and Ukraine. Around 240 coal-fired power plants produce a quarter of the region's electricity. More than 400 coal mines supply those plants. And while some mines are nearly depleted, despite this abundant supply, a combination of factors such as competitive alternative technology and the introduction of climate policy are putting finally pressure on the continued use of coal, particularly in mining and electricity generation. Particularly the Western Balkans economies have a small power sectors, but they are largely based on coal-fired generation, primarily supplied with domestically mined lignite. The only exception in the region is Albania that is fully depending on, uh, on hydro. Most of the coal power plants are old and characterized by very low level of efficiency. When we look at Bosnia, the country currently has five operational coal-fired power plants, nine thermal coal mines, which basically represent the half of the Western Balkan region, and in total support approximately more than 20,000 jobs. Next slide, please. As a response, the green economy transition approach from 2021 to 2025 forms part of the bank's overall strategy for the next five years, and will support the acceleration of the transition to a green, low carbon and resilient economy by aligning his activity with the principle of international climate agreements, including principally the Paris Agreement, enhancing policy engagement for the development of long-term low carbon strategies and greening of financial system, and also scaling up investment in areas such as digital solution, just transitions, circular economy, natural capital, and green value chain financing. They deliver through the bank's private sector-oriented business model, this new approach would include climate action to reduce energy and carbon intensity and to enhance resilience to climate risk, as well as environmental action to abate our air pollution, address water issues, and protect natural capital. EBRD is setting a new target to reach a green finance ratio of more than 50% by 2025, combining financing with the provision of policy expertise. As we have done mostly in the region, especially in uh, supporting uh, renewable energy through options. The EPRD launches the Just Transition Initiative in May last year and aims to ensure the benefits of a green economy transition while protecting vulnerable countries, regions, and people from falling behind. We propose falling to do in the context of Just Transition Initiative. One is to support the green growth. Some of the carbon intensive sector will decline. There are many green opportunities for those regions to be grabbed. And this is linked to the decommissioning and repurposing of the assets that are in decline. But it's also about the growth of the new green assets and new green opportunities investment across many sectors, not only renewables. It could be sustainable tourism. It could be energy efficiency. It could be circular economy, recycling, water quality, and many other things. Second is about skills for future, promoting access to alternative livelihoods for those whose livelihoods are affected by the transition process through reskilling and enhanced entrepreneurship with the context of addressing underlying drivers of inequality. And finally, regional economic development, which is simply to help our region diversifying away from the coal and carbon intensive assets into other economic sector, might be important for them and which will depend from the region to region it could be an SME credit line, women in business, some key infrastructure, digital transformation, attracting new business ideas that create alternative economic opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. The partnership and international cooperation is key in delivering just transition. We keep a regular contact with the European Commission under the just transition mechanism to support countries of operation in the EU designing and implementing territorial just transition plan and working with other stakeholders, as well, including the World Bank, the Energy Community Secretariat, and others. 
Particularly in Western Balkans, in Pratis, together with the EU, World Bank, EIB, and others, we established the Platform Initiative for Coal Transition in Western Balkans and Ukraine, which aims to facilitate the development of strategy and projects to kickstart a timely transition in regions that are currently largely coal dependent. This is a critical issue for the Western Balkans country, where coal is still fundamental to the energy sector, accounting for about 70% of electricity produced in the region. The platform aims to facilitate the development of strategies and projects to kickstart a timely transition in regions that are richly coal dependent. It offers financing and policy support, but also an academy for policymakers and twinning of coal region to share knowledge. This transition from coal is part of a broader cross-sector transition to near zero carbon emission for the Balkans. This will involve all the sector. It is clear we need to move faster and we have uh, historically lack behind on this. The EBRD work closely with the MDBs as well to advance international support for a just transition ahead of COP26. The joint MDBs Paris Alignment Working Group focusing on just transition completed the first phase of joint work and now common principle for MDB support for a just transition are being developed. This principle, we provide high level guidance to ensure that uh, we will all act consistently, credibly and transparently to contribute to the aims of a just transition while acknowledging tailored operation definition and the country priorities. On the last slides, please let's go to the next one. We will have a kind of a explanation of uh, how in reality the EBRD is already applying what would be the effectively uh, planning of the just transition. So this is where we have a, a case study for the North Macedonia, where the EBRD is working uh, <clears throat> to carbonize across different sectors and increase the pace of decarbonization. This includes financing of renewable energy, clean transport, energy efficiency industry, low carbon buildings, and developing ocean for renewable energy, as well as support countries, clients, and low carbon roadmaps. To give a recent example, as mentioned in North Macedonia, we had uh, uh, and were in the process of implementing a just transition plan uh, through a just transition diagnostic, including a focus on the social implication and the transition such as reskilling, upskilling, and redeployment of opportunities. Besides establishing policy dialogue and the planning to design just transition plan, we provide financing for green investment, which led to a reduction of existing environmental impact. The BRD supported the state-owned utility ESM for implementing two solar power plants projects. One is under construction is 10 megawatt solar power plant on the exhaust coal mine of uh, Oslo May uh, near the city of Kichevo. While the other one is uh, the other project that is under final negotiation is the extension of the same uh, um, solar power plant for additional 10 megawatt and the construction of 20 megawatt solar power plant adjacent to the still operating thermal power plant in Bitola in the southern part of the country. The engagement in cooperation with the government of Macedonia aims to identify the social implication of the just transition and challenges for regional development and define a redeployment reskilling opportunity and develop labor market initiatives aiming to retain the core regional local workforces in cooperation with all involved stakeholders. Additionally, we also support the authorities to launch in the same area of Oslo May, a 100 megawatt uh, private-public partnership divided in two different lots of 50 megawatt each, in which private investors were bidding and competing in a joint venture with uh, uh, state-owned utilities, and they were offering, offering as, uh, as parameters for the bid a portion of their revenues. This is another model for just transition directly involved in the private sector. So I think that uh, you know this is a uh, very briefly not to overlap with other colleagues that were already discussing before. Uh, the next slide you have my contact, uh, also the contact of my colleague Russell Bishop that uh, he's uh, involved uh, from the economics and the uh, team. So I remain available for uh, for your questions. Thank you very much. Hvala gospodine Korbo, a s obzirom na vrijeme, 
Thank you, Mr. Karba, but uh, given the time, I suggest that we hear the last presentation in today's program, and then we will have a question and answer session. And Ladira, I hope you agree. Thank you, Professor. I do agree with you, but I believe that uh, we should go back to the Menti application and see what our participants will think about the next question. I hope you can all see the question. I confirm that we can see the question. We have, uh, we are receiving first answers. Benefits of the transition, uh, our participants most excited about are our, our environmental uh, reduction of uh, air pollution, renewables, uh, enhanced uh, protection of environment, regional rejuvenation, investments in green economic sectors. Again, enhanced environment, uh, creation of new jobs and better quality of the environment, cleaner environment, green jobs. Again, improved air quality, green jobs, uh, just transition for employees uh, in the mining and energy sector, protection, uh, health protection for citizens and positive impact on the environment, uh, reduce the respiratory diseases, uh, conversion, with the EU, approximation to EU. Helping shake up dormant industries and war processes. Pomoći da se uzdrmaju industrije koje miruju i procesi. Air quality in focus again. We have received 27 answers in total. A few minutes more. Decarbonization, renewables, improved environment, uh, green economy in progress, development of economy and society, and increased number of jobs, uh, strengthened economy. Very interesting answers from our participants. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us at this webinar and for participating in this uh, survey. It's uh, very important for us to know what you mean, uh, to know your thoughts. Compliance with the procedure of allocation of the state aid. Uh, environmental protection, focusing on recultivation and remediation. Uh, state aid as an uh, integral part of the transition, and that's it. I suggest we should uh, close this application and then continue with the next presentation. As I said at the beginning, uh, we will close this uh, webinar with an overview of uh, uh, energy transition and uh, energy and opportunities uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Anes Hadžakic, he is head uh, of the sector for strategic development with the Elektroprivreda of Bosnia and Herzegovina in Sarajevo, and he is uh, energy efficiency manager. He participated in modernization and upgrading of our thermal power plants, uh, and he was uh, uh, implementing multiple projects uh, in Elektroprivreda, including <clears throat> research and development uh, Horizon 20 project uh, 
He is uh, ma uh, managing uh, a long-term development in Bosnia in, uh, in uh, the Electro Privreda. He published over 100 uh, uh, works of authorship in uh, various uh, journals. Uh, Mr. Kazagic, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ms. Berbic. Uh, may I greet all the participants on my own behalf and on the behalf of uh, Elektro Privred of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I should say I, it is a great honor that I have this opportunity to share some thoughts at today's webinar. And we are very pleased and honored uh, that you have invited us to do so, um, being one of the major electricity company and uh, i believe we can contribute to this uh, topic which is actually a hot topic today i believe uh, you will find interesting some of the information i will share with you i would also like to welcome the variety of participants today from different levels of governments uh, we have here representatives of the national ministry, which is the coordinator of energy strategy in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I would like to welcome the point made by Mr. Oprašić. We will certainly support this. We uh, had another initiative from Mofter to uh, appoint uh, a representative to a national team which would coordinate the transition activities in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I do hope this uh, expert body will become operational in full capacity. And I also greet Miss uh, Rachel Perks from the World Bank, uh, with whom we have been intensively working for the past uh, several months regarding transition of uh, coal regions. And uh, we do hope that uh, we will be able to implement all uh, the activities that we started together. Uh, may I share my presentation with you now? If you could please confirm when you see it on the screen. Not yet. Now it's coming. That's it. We can see it now. I adopted the topic to the proposed agenda. You can uh, uh, select slideshow, please, as you usually do. Yes, that's it. So this is an overview of energy transition with challenges and opportunities in Bosnia and Herzegovina on the example of the electric uh, electric that they have. I uh, listed here what is what are the perspectives of the uh, energy sector, not only in Bos Bosnia and Herzegovina, in Herzegovina, but at the global level, and uh, I'm confident that other electricity company also comply with these principles. We have the energy transition in progress and the replacement uh, of uh, fossil fuel uh, energy with renewable energy, but that's actually in line with the requirements of decarbonization and reduction of uh, uh, GHG. And this also implies the uh, the uh, gradual um, uh, uh, phasing out of uh, uh, coal fuel, the thermal power plant, and their replacement with uh, some other models such as uh, solar or uh, solar or wind uh, power plants. This, uh, on the other hand, enhances energy efficiency both at the level of the distribution and the co uh, consumption. Another uh, alternative is to introduce alternative fuels, which would partly replace fossil fuels. Alternative uh, 
fuels which are CO2 neutral and are environmental and climate friendly. I uh, mean the biomass, waste uh, biomass and uh, uh, fast growing uh, energy crops and uh, uh, waste fuels and of course uh, smart distribut uh, distribution networks uh, also belong to concept which will in the near future change entirely change the electricity system not only in bosnia and herzegovina and herzegovina but globally of course uh, storage of uh, uh, heat power uh, should be tackled uh, i should note that uh, we uh, frequently discuss transition of the electricity uh, power sector uh, while neglecting the heat sector, but uh, we need to tackle these two sectors in parallel because uh, actually they equally contribute to increase the CO2 emissions and uh, they have equal needs uh, uh, for uh, implementation of uh, new modules. And to this end, uh, I refer here to several modules that uh, we are trying to develop and uh, implement in the near future. And these are uh, solar te thermal uh, heat pumps and geothermal energy. Of course, oxygen as a future technology, but uh, to do this, uh, we need uh, in, uh, we need intensive research and uh, development. As for uh, specific challenges that uh, EPBIH faces uh, in view of 2050 timeline and decarbonization target, uh, some of the requirements and conditions uh, that dictate this are the national plan of reduction of pollutants, uh, and uh, we committed to certain ceilings of emissions from uh, thermal power blocks, and we also have to uh, limit the ceilings uh, for CO2. So we uh, uh, and we need to implement the ET. C scheme, and I do uh, hope that all the governmental entities, uh, uh, governmental bodies uh, will take this seriously in order to be able to uh, adopt this uh, ETS directive requirements. We are, of course, aware and we are working on development of projects uh, for on renewable, renewable energy. Uh, some two months ago, we uh, uh, commissioned our first wind park and uh, we are developing two new ones. I will say something more about this uh, at a later point. What is one of the pressing challenges is to phase out uh, production in the current thermal power uh, blocks and uh, reducing the demand for coal and gradual closing of uh, mines and uh, thermal blocks uh, which are uh, belong to our company we already uh, developed some master plans uh, towards the implementation of this objective in this uh, transition period, we need to survive. We need to maintain the system to make it sustainable. So we made uh, plans for upgrading of some thermal power blocks, uh, which would uh, uh, remain functional during the transition period. And we also plan to introduce uh, CO2 neutral alternative fuels, which would uh, partially replace coal and uh, uh, the CO2 emission. One of the key questions, how we can do this in a sustainable way is uh, the management of strategy and planning of uh, uh, energy prices. We were quite rigid 
about this as a society and we failed to follow positive trends from our perspectives uh, that uh, were cherished in all developed countries uh, uh, which uh, uh, made efforts to provide for sustainable development. Unfortunately, in our country, these prices were fixed uh, and they were very too low and we don't have um, maneuvering space to increase these prices as uh, uh, Mr. Daljevic uh, uh, suggested in his presentation. Of course, all the levels of government uh, should uh, uh, support uh, this uh, planning of uh, electricity prices. Uh, we have uh, continuously worked on planning our uh, responsibilities and mand mandate uh, until 2050. Uh, we uh, are using our soft own software tools. Uh, we uh, uh, work with uh, financial indicators and environmental indicators, and uh, we seek to make sure that everything uh, we do is uh, in uh, line with the just transition we discussed today. And this is one of the crucial points uh, which uh, will uh, be uh, decisive for acceleration of uh, energy transition in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And this is the aspect of uh, CO2 emission and its reduction. And you have uh, already been informed of this uh, and we informed the public also that Electroprivreda signed the document uh, early this month, uh, a commitment actually uh, to internally calculate charges for CO2 emissions. It is a transitional arrangement before we have this system in place at the national level. We have our milestone. We set them for 2030, 2040, 2050. As you can see, by 2030, we plan to reduce CO2 emissions uh, by 30%, which is in line with the documents uh, which Bosnia and Herzegovina is developing, as uh, 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 such as uh, Energy Climate Plan. This is the strictest uh, plan for ETS uh, em emitters in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Regardless of this strong platform that uh, will be uh, prescribed by NECP, we believe that the economy will compel us to uh, maintain this uh, goal by 30 percent. And uh, we uh, this is uh, the reference year is 2017. We will achieve this uh, by three uh, pillars, increase uh, of renewable energy sources, increase uh, TPP efficiency and coal phase out. and uh, uh, introduction of alternative fuels, as I already mentioned. This is the backbone of uh, the main scenario of the production portfolio of uh, Electroprivreda. We have our hydropower plants uh, uh, at Neretva since recently, Wind uh, Park uh, Podvelezje for a thermal power plant Tuzla. We plan to upgrade them. They will remain operational. We will introduce bio biomass uh, and different types of alternative uh, fuels to reduce CO2 emissions. And of course, we will intensively develop uh, renewable energy sources in order to make up for the uh, thermal power plant produced energy. This is the change of the structure of our production portfolio towards 2050. This means significant redu significantly reducing production uh, from thermal power plants and in increasing uh, production and output of uh, renewable resources. Uh, and we seek to remain uh, below the ceilings and we uh, are also improving the network of uh, our 
company in order to be more attractive for our buyers and clients. I will uh, now briefly touch upon uh, planned projects uh, in the decade until 2030. I will not uh, detail about each and every project, but you will have this uh, presentation available and you will be able to see the projects that we planned, uh, what is the level of the investments uh, regarding hydropower plants, uh, wind parks, uh, and in the in the portfolio of uh, and the uh, 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 solar plants. Uh, we are uh, we focus on the area of uh, mines which will be clothes uh, where th we need to repurpose the land and use it for another useful purpose one of the criteria which meet this uh, purpose are for, for um, solar plants and we already started installing uh, these plants in uh, on the uh, sides of some of uh, the mines we closed and we already received uh, positive feedback from our uh, some of the banks uh, to which we applied and we do expect cooperation with international financial institutions uh, which should support the implementation of this project uh, speaking about variable uh, renewable energy sources uh, wind parks and uh, solar energy uh, electro privada plans to, to um, construct 11 such facilities uh, with the total uh, uh, installed capacity 448 megawatts and uh, annual output uh, up to uh, 890 gigawatts and hopefully even 1000 and uh, capital costs, uh, estimated capital costs uh, are uh, slightly over 1 billion. Uh, this, uh, uh, all these activities are the part of the transition of uh, our company. We have uh, conducted some activities uh, in relation to uh, mines and uh, Mr. Miljevic uh, mentioned the uh, restructuring of our mines as a positive news. We engaged in this process bravely with very specific goals in mind. Of course, uh, Electro Privada cannot do this on their own. Uh, we need uh, uh, support, not only declarative, but also financial and institutional support to bring this uh, sector to the level of just transition, which is promoted uh, uh, through all initiatives at the global level. And in addition to photo, uh, construction of photovoltaic uh, plants, uh, with, where we will diversify uh, activities uh, and uh, reskill uh, some uh, uh, em employees uh, from uh, um, uh, mines, uh, we also started the process uh, of. Uh, fast growing biomass, uh, uh, fast growing crops of bi biomass. Uh, we already uh, planted uh, some of these crops uh, in two of the sites uh, of former mines. And we have full support from several levels, from some international funds and institutions. This uh, can be a very attractive business uh, uh, for uh, employment of uh, some uh, former miners, and uh, we can use biomass uh, as a transition fuel or a fuel which will partly replace uh, uh, coal in our thermal power plants. We have been uh, also uh, considering other options uh, in addition to fast growing crops and photovoltaic uh, plants. Uh, with our industrial and uh, um, partners and academia, we have been discussing this and uh, monitoring the projects uh, aimed at transitioning uh, the mines. And we are trying to use, to maximize the use uh, of uh, knowledge uh, they share with us, but uh, we also expect some more specific support. I should also, stress a very good cooperation with the World Bank. We have, uh, we opened several 
uh, chapters, biomass, photovoltaic uh, plants, uh, waste uh, fuel, and detailed uh, planning and uh, repurposing uh, of uh, uh, mine lands. All these chapters uh, are being discussed between our team and the team of the World Bank. And we do hope that uh, our cooperation uh, will have a very specific results. And in conclusion, until uh, the end of 2023, we will decommission, uh, decommission another three uh, thermal power plant blocks uh, in Tuzla and Kakan, and we will gradually phase out uh, and reduce production in thermal power blocks, uh, which uh, uh, remain uh, operational. We plan to upgrade uh, them. Uh, we are working on upgrading uh, of uh, the block in Tuzla. They brought it to 13% of ETA efficiency, and now we are working in uh, to uh, transform the thermal power block into cogeneration, and we plan to do so on, on the block seven in thermal power plant in Kakan and another two blocks which uh, will remain operational. We also plan to introduce uh, biomass uh, fuel and uh, waste fuel. We are also considering the conversion of one of the blocks in Kakan and Tuzla uh, to uh, use uh, exclusively biomass and uh, waste fuel. That's the next uh, phase. Uh, we are also considering an option of a gas block, gas fuel block, block which would uh, balance the network of Electroprivreda. I said already we will install the uh, up to 500 megawatts of uh, res by 2030 when uh, parks and uh, photovoltaic plants uh, the plan uh, until 2025 is 850 megawatts we started uh, the process of reorganization restructuring and phasing out of some facilities in mines and diversification of uh, uh, business activities in uh, mines and we are working on repurpose land repurposing uh, on in mines and as I uh, reiterated in my presentation and I believe Mr. Miljevic also mentioned this uh, Electro Privida will not be able to do this on their own we need uh, financial and technical support from international institutions. We believe that this is a very courageous uh, plan. It is sustainable. It is very specific. And with a, a certain su support, uh, we can implement it. Thank you, Dr. Kazagic. Indeed, for we had uh, a dilemma if we should uh, stop you, but uh, that uh, was this was very specific, uh, detailed, and I believe that all the participants were eager to hear what you said. Although we actually are out of time, I believe that from the technical point of view, there is no problem that we remain together for other, another 10 minutes and to answer some of the questions but for the questions which we do not answer today at this webinar, we will try to address them or to send them to the person uh, from whom they are asked and uh, you will receive written uh, answers through email. As for the discussion, I should note uh, uh, all the questions, uh, we have 11 answers uh, that are not answered. All of them are very interesting. But if you allow me, I would like to start uh, uh, with the questions for Mr. Kazagic. He is still with us and uh, it's more most convenient for him 
the question is where can we find more information about uh, uh, the fast growing uh, crops uh, breeding uh, on mine sites and how will the uh, meeting of obligations from NERP affect the consumers, as uh, Mr. Miljevic said, that the energy electricity in BIH is uh, the most expensive. Just briefly, please. Thank you, Mr. Az uh, Professor Azrudin. Regarding the first question, we have an uh, endorsed study endorsed by our management about fast growing crops and our uh, Department for Development is in charge of this. They are coordinating with the uh, mine, mines and uh, uh, production line of the of Elektroprivreda. I believe that some uh, documents that we prepared can be available, made available. I believe that uh, we recently uh, published information about uh, these plantations in Kreka and Breza on our website, but if uh, it's not available on the internet, I will see with uh, our uh, responsible department and ask them to put this on the website uh, so as to make it available to a wider public. And the second question is also very interesting, whether the meeting of obligations from NERP will affect and how it will affect end users. Uh, from this uh, position and the role I have in our company, whatever I say can uh, be perceived as a, 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 my own opinion, but we are all aware that uh, we have lowest prices uh, for households in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And it is impossible to implement uh, energy transition, introduce and implement innovate, innovative technologies, improve environment and uh, maintain the level of prices. That's I can say, of course, everything will be finally decided uh, by uh, uh, at, at the level of the policy. And we do need a uh, policy on prices. Electroprivreda should not always initiate uh, things and uh, uh, and be blamed for every increase of prices. We, we, need, we need understanding and we need that uh, people um, accept uh, the real, the actual situation. Mr. Damir Miljevic, um, Asked for the floor at one point, he probably wanted to add something to this answer. Mr. Miljevic, the floor is yours, but please try to be brief. I will be very brief. What uh, the gentleman from Electroprivreda Pia said uh, is absolutely truth. Everyone disregards uh, is the point that uh, uh, that uh, uh, we need to distinguish be between those who can afford economic price of electricity and those who cannot. And we need to find a modality for those who are not able to pay this price to help them. The gentleman is quite right. We need to find a solution. We cannot keep people happy uh, by ruining our producers of electricity. Of course, thank you. Thank you for this uh, additional explanation. And I would like to ask the question uh, for Mr. Nikolaus to this end. I would uh, kindly ask you to translate. The question is in our language. And I do hope that Mr. Nikolaus is still with us. Professor, uh, Mr. Nikolaus had to leave, but uh, we can read the question and uh, if uh, anyone of the panelists can say something, that's fine. If not, uh, we will certainly forward the question to Mr. Nikolaus. 
Yes, I will read the question, but uh, if uh, any panelists can answer the question, that's fine. The question, who approach, uh, who uh, ensures the approach to financing of uh, just transition programs and what are the requirements? It is not fair that ele uh, electric companies have opportunity to obtain the funds from international funds benefits and even use money as compared uh, uh, to vulnerable population, especially for rehabilitation of destroyed areas, restructuring, uh, uh, severance payment uh, and others, because that's their obligation, but they want to avoid this obligation uh, by doing so. Can any other panelist uh, answer this question, the representative of the World Bank, perhaps? Sure, I, I can. Da, uh, da. Ono što sam ranije spomenula, obično, kada dajemo zajmove i kredite, mi o tome pregovaramo sa državnim vladama. Kad se radi o tranziciji u određenim regijama, naravno, postoji potreba za izradu programa i to je pristup od ozdo prema gore. Znači, regije pokreću i osmišljavaju aktivnosti koje žele da se provedu u njihovoj regiji. Dakle, u kontekstu Bosne i Hercegovine radimo sa različitim nivojima vlasti i pokušavamo da im pomognemo da u prioritizaciji, tako da je apsolutno tačno da sve ono što se da Bosni i Hercegovini neće biti namjenjeno samo za privatni sektor, nego za različite aktere i pogođene strane u cijelom procesu. Hvala na odgovoru, a mi ćemo u svakom slučaju pitanje uputiti gospodinu Nikolausu. A mi idemo dalje. Hvala na odgovoru. Hvala na odgovoru. Hvala na odgovoru. We have a request from Mr. Zvezdan. He is leaving, has a meeting at uh, 1600 hours, and he would like to know the answer to his question. This is, uh, does Elektroprivreda Bosnia and Herzegovina have uh, an alternative plan if uh, the Block 7 of TPP Tuzla fails? Or how will you? Will you make up for this failure? Of course, we must have an alternative plan. It is our task, and uh, we have been intensively thinking about this, and we are preparing this alternative solution. We don't want to, to uh, to to disclose this uh, plan before the situation with block seven is resolved i i believe the reasons uh, are clear but uh, when the time comes uh, this plan will be disclosed and uh, we will implement it and thank you for your question thank you once again thank you Dr. Kazagic for your answer. And uh, regarding other questions, uh, we have uh, several questions regarding uh, gender equality. And uh, as uh, these questions uh, were asked from Claudia Strambo, uh, who is a member of the team uh, for the development of the environmental strategy, we will forward these questions to her and you will receive written answers. Regarding uh, the question uh, about the strategy, development strategy 2021-2028 of the Federation, as we said at the beginning, uh, I am in charge uh, of 
the topic uh, energy, climate change uh, and uh, air quality, I, I can confirm on behalf of our group that we do use this uh, strategy and the Federal uh, Institute for uh, the coordination of development uh, requested us to use this strategy in our working groups we discuss the objectives and the contents of the federal strategy and if we have certain arguments that uh, we can improve some of these objectives we do so as uh, uh, we already uh, used our time. There is uh, there are some other questions. One question for the representative of EBRD also, but uh, given that uh, the time um, elapsed for this uh, webinar, we will forward this question to Mr. Corbo and you will have a written answer. Uh, we worked 20 minutes more than we planned, but I do hope that uh, you. it was interesting to hear about the situation, the current situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina, in the coal sector and uh, sectors that rely on the coal sector. And then we've also had a possibility to hear what are our opportunities and uh, what are the lessons learned uh, from other regions, primarily from EU regions, and uh, what are the mechanisms available uh, for to assist Bosnia and Herzegovina in this process. May I ask uh, Dr. Softic? Uh, at the beginning, we heard uh, his uh, introductory or key uh, notes and we heard uh, what the Ministry of uh, Foreign Trade and Economic Relations is doing in this regard. And I would kindly ask uh, Mr. Kodic to uh, briefly uh, comment what we've heard from the presentations and discussion and the questions asked. Just a brief reflection uh, about uh, takeaway from this webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed to the organizer for the excellent webinar. We had excellent presentations and the Ministry of Foreign Trade and Economic Relations will, uh, what you've heard from uh, uh, Ms. Parks, uh, uh, what our ministry will do in with regard to the transition we need to develop the roadmap and after that we need to improve our legal framework in order to uh, do what is envisaged in the roadmap. This roadmap uh, will uh, facilitate uh, the transition in coal regions. Uh, as for future activities, uh, we do need support given the fact that the world bank which uh, is uh, together uh, with us uh, developing this roadmap and coordination with this region i would like to use this opportunity to uh, invite sida and the stockholm environment institute the donors to uh, get involved and uh, to uh, schedule a meeting uh, with us and Miss Rachel from the World Bank to see how we can cover the gaps uh, we identified. We, we should uh, involve them in these activities too. And uh, at the end uh, of this year, we should be able to count on the assistance of this institute, uh, given their experience in this field in the EU. I, I believe this is uh, this would be very good. I see that Rachel is nodding and supporting this initiative. So in addition to this idea to support us, we need consensus of all the stakeholders, all decision makers in Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, 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 we have a very uh, 
outdated uh, sector, old fashioned uh, thermal power plants. And uh, it is uh, very important that we have full commitment of all the stakeholders in order to uh, attain the desired result. And that is the dec decarbonization of the energy sector. Of course, uh, also meeting the requirements of just transition. We should not allow this uh, transition uh, will certainly be painful, but we should not allow it to affect so severely our, our people and our companies and to inflict uh, huge damages on them for many decades. That would be all from my side. Once again, thank you very much on behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Trade and Economic Relations. If you have any further questions, you can contact us. We can have uh, further meetings uh, in order to clarify certain points uh, or uncertainties. Thank you very much, Professor Husika and all other participants. Thank you, Dr. Sotic. Thank you all, of, and uh, may I ask uh, my colleague Nadira to, uh, to give us a conclusion and to close uh, the meeting. First of all, may I thank all our panelists for taking the time to share such uh, useful and good information with all of us. Uh, we learned a lot today and the exchange uh, information. And uh, I thank uh, the attendees, especially those who stayed with us until the end. I believe that uh, we can uh, uh, make uh, several crucial conclusions. We've uh, heard energy trans tr transition and uh, phasing out of coal is here. It can come here in a five or 10 years, but uh, it is inevitable. The demand uh, for coal will start decreasing. We've heard that the economic and other triggers and uh, 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 for, for, uh, to phase out the coal are here and uh, further use of coal will only uh, deteriorate uh, our air quality and the environment. But at the same time, we will have more and more alternative available and as Mr. Kazagic uh, made a good point that uh, we need to engage into research and development. It is also inevitable that we need to start uh, to plan how to mitigate uh, the consequences and implications uh, for uh, coal communities and regions and those uh, uh, communities which depend on coal. We already mentioned the term energy poverty, poverty and uh, that's uh, something that is uh, tied uh, with the region and Bosnia and Herzegovina. And finally, the idea of just transition, which was discussed by our colleague Claude, means that the planning process must be in line with the uh, uh, just uh, just transition, with the uh, just uh, uh, distribution of both uh, objectives and benefits. We've heard uh, some experience from other countries and lessons learned, and we should take them and acknowledge them in order to have a better and uh, more just planning in our country. And uh, I should say we have benefits, uh, we, we have advantage, we will be transitioning at a later point, but then we have an opportunity to learn from those who have already conducted this transition. And of course, through the application Menti, we all concluded that we expect multiple benefits from this process, improved health, uh, improved status of biodiversity, better water, reduced uh, GHG. And these are key messages uh, we would like you to take uh, from this uh, webinar. Thank you once again for the time you have taken and for the questions you are asked, we will make sure to that you receive answers to your addresses and we will probably put them on our website, www.isap.com.